All right, Ahmed, this is for you. We're going to calculate this limit right here. And notice we have a regular trig, a hyperbolic trig, and a regular inverse trig, and also the hyperbolic inverse trig. Everything's here. Wow. Well, we'll see. First, if you put zero into all the x, we will end up with zero over zero. So we can go ahead and just use Laputal's rule. So I'll just put on d dx and also d dx. And this right here is, of course, testing our derivatives, right? And let me just write down the limit as x approaching zero. Well, huh, what's the derivative of inverse tangent? Ah, I think I know the answer. It's 1 over 1 plus x squared. And then I'll put on the minus. The derivative of inverse hyperbolic tangent is 1 over 1 minus x squared. And then the derivative sine is pass the cosine and keep the minus because the derivative of sin x is pass the cosh. So you have this right here. But if you put 0 into all the x, you get 1 minus 1 on top, which is 0. And on the bottom, you also get 1 minus 1, which is again 0. So we are going to do L'Hopital's rule again. So let's put on ddx, ddx, like this and that. Well, well, let's see. This is the limit as x approaching 0. Now, perhaps I'll show you the derivative on the side. Right here, if you want to differentiate this, you should put it as 1 plus x squared and then to the negative 1 power. Bring that down to the top and make that into a negative power. This is easier because you can bring the power to the front and minus 1. And we end up with negative 1 because the negative 1 right here. And then inside stays the same, which is 1 plus x squared. And this right here is negative 2. And don't forget the Chengdu. You have to multiply by the derivative inside, which is 2x. And of course, we can put this down nicer. Well, we get negative 2x over this in the denominator. And don't forget to the second power. So that's what we have. And then you're just going to put that right here. Well, we get negative 2x over 1 plus x squared, and then square this guy. Okay, and let me tell you, I'll put on the minus here first. To differentiate this, it's pretty much the same thing like that, except for this is minus. And when you differentiate the inside, this right here will be a negative 2x. Negative times negative, you end up with positive, right? So this right here is going to be positive, but you do have this negative from this right here. Anyway, you will end up with 2x over 1 minus x squared, and then square that. Whew, I know. Anyway, keep going. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And the derivative of cosh is positive sinh. And the minus is still right here. And once again, this right here gives us positive sinh x. <sighs> yes. If you put 0 into all the x, on the top is 0, on the bottom is again 0. Just one more time, right? Hopefully that's the case. If not, maybe I will just delete this video, but I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, um, this is the limit as x approaching 0. And now this is some serious business. Because to differentiate this right here, we actually have to use the quotient rule. And as you can see, this right here, it's not an easy expression, so I need a bigger space. So let me write this down right here. And perhaps let's do the bottom one first so we can feel better anyway. So right here, the derivative of negative sine x is negative cosine x. And the derivative of negative sinh is going to be negative cosh x. And look at here. If x is approaching 0, you get negative 1 minus 1. So on the bottom, you have negative 2. You know you're not going to get the 0 over 0 because the bottom is not 0. If the top is 0, it's 0 over 2, so it's 0. So we have a good chance. But anyway, we still have to figure out what the top is. So here we go. Do the quotient rule. So we'll end up with this right here as this. I will square the denominator so it becomes 1 plus x squared squared. This was the original denominator, but the quotient rule says I will have to square this. And then I will bring the bottom function to the top right here, which is 1 plus x squared squared. And then times 
the derivative of the top, meaning we have to multiply by negative 2 right here. And the quotient rule says we have to subtract the top function, which is negative 2x, times the derivative of the bottom. Well, right here, we have to bring the 2 to the front, and then subtract the power by 1, and then you have the inside states the same, which is 1 plus x squared to the first power. And you are going to multiply by the derivative of inside, which is another 2x, like that. So, yes, this is the derivative of that. I'm not going to bother to simplify this, because if you put 0 into all the x, this part is going to give me 0, because you have x times the rest. So this part is going to be 0. And of course this is 0, so you have 1 squared times negative 2. Over the inside is just 1, to whatever power, still 1, right, in this case. So you end up with a nice negative 2 from this part. And let's see what we get from here. So let's see, we are going to minus. All right. So uh, I need a longer fraction bar, huh? Anyway, I will just, well, just show you the derivative. It's good, okay, when you differentiate, it's good. Yeah, maybe you are in calc 2 or calc 1, but you know, just differentiate this. Anyway, put the bottom here, which is 1 minus x squared squared, and then multiply by the derivative of the top, which is just a 2, and then minus the top function, which is 2x. And once again, this is because of the quotient rule. 2x right here, the top function, and then multiply by the derivative of the bottom. Bring the 2 to the front, so we have 2 times 1 minus x squared, and then to the first power here. And don't forget the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of inside, which is negative 2x. Just like that, right? And to make this prettier, I will put down the denominator right here, which is negative cosine x minus cosh of x, right? Now, let's see. I will put 0 into all the x. As I said, this right here is 0, and this right here is just 1. Right here, we get negative 2 on the top. And likewise, this right here is going to give me 0, because thanks to this 0, maybe not 0, but this is 0. And if you put 0 right here, this is just 1 to a second power, which is 1 times 2. But you have a minus 2 over 1 minus 0 is 1. It's a solid 1 to whatever power is 1. So you have minus 2. So on the top, you have negative 2 minus 2. On the bottom, cosine 0 is 1, so you have negative 1. And then cos of 0 is also 1, so you have another minus 1. This is so pretty. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be negative 4 over negative 2. And the final answer is positive 2 right here. Right? So, that's it. All right, leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions. And if you guys are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. And as always, this is it.